Okay, maybe this is it. Uh, this is a very exciting moment for me and actually for the whole Cyanogen Law team. We're very glad to be here. We didn't know this because uh, Cyanogen Law is called the behavior, which is uh, simply mind blowing and amazing. Um, so, in my presentation, I will uh, give a quick overview of uh, what Cyanogen Law is, what we aim for, how do we do it, and uh, this will all be in a very superficial level and uh, so that everyone can grasp it. We'll have another session uh, tomorrow, I think, uh, with uh, a little more technical bits that you can enjoy. And also, uh, feel free to, to come to me at any time and uh, ask me all the questions I'll leave to answer. Okay so, um, okay, so during this presentation, I will be talking about several things. Uh, I'll start with the quick introduction of Sandwich Mark. And uh, then I'll talk about the biggest part of Sandwich Mark, which is the community. Uh, Sandwich Mark is all about uh, contributing and giving back. Uh, what you do and uh, so we receiving things that you can actually contribute. So uh, this is a very good thing for us and that's why we like to come to community events. This is simply amazing actually. Um, then I'll talk a bit about the technical bits behind science and I'll begin in a very superficial level so everyone will be able to actually understand what, what I will be uh, talking about. And then uh, sometimes questions are an extra. In, uh, in my presentation, questions are a big part of, uh, of, of it, okay? I really want you to ask what I really feel like, and uh, I'll be glad to answer. So, uh, without further ado, let's start. Uh, so, what is uh, Cyanogen Mod? I'm not sure how many of you heard of it, so I usually like to do something where I ask people to put their hands up if they ever heard of Cyanogen Mod. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, from those of you who have heard of it, how many of you do use it? That's actually quite a bit, okay, thanks. And um, so, for those of you who don't know it, Sanjin Mod fills a, a hole in the Android ecosystem, which is uh, an open source uh, aftermarket distribution. So, for example, if you see the Linux ecosystem, you have several distributions made by commercial vendors, like uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat, etc. And uh, you see several others which are independent, like Arc Linux, Game 2, etc. And we, we think of ourselves as uh, one of the first Arc Linuxes of, uh, of Android. And uh, it's a very exciting opportunity to actually support the platform which uh, gives you the opportunity to use more than eight devices. We are actually working on any devices every single, every single day. <coughs> so, we provide the latest and greatest, greatest version of Android to pretty much every device out there. And uh, this is something that is really big because many devices uh, are stuck in versions like 2.0 and 2.1. I'll talk a bit about this later. And uh, well, it's a great platform for developers and enthusiasts alike. We have lots of users uh, who are really, really uh, into Sanj mods, who like to contribute back, etc., try every new thing. And uh, I think in a par trying to parallel with, with our fun, it's, uh, it shares exactly the same mindset. So it's something that developers do for developers and users benefit from it, okay? So one question that people ask us all the time is, why do you do this? I mean, Android is open source. Why are you actually adding to it? Well, this is a, a tweet from Andy Rubin. He's the vice president of, vice president of uh, Mobile at Google. And uh, he said that uh, the definition of open is this thing, and this is a set of commands that can use to actually build the Android open source project. Uh, the thing is, uh, is it really open? Can you actually build it? And the answer is yes, of course, you can build it. If you have an XSS, if you have an XS1, okay? Uh, the question is, what about the others? Most people don't have these devices, so that there's a, a wide market out there. And uh, those people are kind of left out of the whole open uh, Android, Android experience. So this is one of our biggest reasons. So chances are your device is not supported, of course. So we add support for it. And uh, some people use Sanji mod just because they are like they are like being in control of their devices. You may have heard recently that. Uh, carriers are introducing uh, statistics uh, applications in their, in their mobile uh, devices. And these statistics applications basically, they will gather your uh, SMS stats, like who you contact when, your calls, etc. And for me personally, uh, I feel like this is something that I do not want. I do not want people to know actually what I do. So 
uh, I like to be in control of my devices and menus and stuff like this. Uh, others simply enjoy the extra features that we provide, like we, are very, we have a very open mindset into what goes into the Sarah Gemma project. So many users like uh, using OpenVPN, which is not available in uh, Spark Android. Others just like, like incognito mode on, on the browser, etc. So we have a wide set of features and uh, we offer them to, to the community of, uh, like just in the form of Sarah Gemma. Okay? So uh, another question that people uh, ask us all the time is, is not that supported? And uh, one thing that I also like to do is actually use the same uh, show of hands. And uh, I'll ask you to, I'll show uh, some brand of devices, and if you own them, uh, put your hand up and keep it up until the end of the slide, okay? So, anyone on the ZTE? I mentioned ZTE is not very popular here, okay? Uh, Huawei? No. LG? Okay, quite a bit of hands. Uh, Sony Ericsson? No. Okay. Uh, Samsung, I mentioned this is pretty big, yeah. And uh, HTC, okay? So, given this uh, brand, we support many more, but uh, actually, from this brand, we support nearly all the devices that they, they offer, okay? And uh, some people also ask us, but my device isn't supported. And we say, well, we are welcoming contributors all over the time. And actually, I want to share you amazing statistics with, which uh, have been going on since the last year on the Tangema project. And uh, we, since last year, we have nearly uh, multiplied by 10 our device count. So we previously supported like eight devices and now we are approaching 80, which is simply amazing and pretty good and you know, the work of all the people involved in this, uh, in this project. And uh, that's the introduction. And this leads me to part two and most important, the community, okay? So, um, is a giant, giant community, okay? This is, a, remember that this is an open source project made by volunteers. So, we have, having 705,000 users is amazing for us. And these are users that actually choose to uh, report their statistics in. So, we expect that there are much more, like me, who don't like to share their statistics with other people. And uh, maybe, we have no idea, maybe it's double this, maybe it's 10 times this, we have no idea, actually. But this number alone impresses us a lot. And uh, we have several uh, volunteers around that make the whole Cyan Mod experience better. Okay, so we have around 40 permanent developers, and uh, these people are not paid to work on Cyan Mod. Uh, what they do is they invest their free time, they give uh, all their efforts to the community. And uh, basically, there are several kinds of uh, developers in Cyan Mod. There are ones which simply maintain devices, so when new versions are out, they will uh, try to make their devices work with them. There are others who actually contribute to the whole platform, and there are others who actually fulfill more administrative roles, like uh, coordinating developers and uh, merging changes in, etc. And uh, we also have amazing people who are liaising to the community, and uh, these people will uh, talk to the users, which is something that developers usually suck at, and uh, everyone knows that. Okay? And uh, they do an amazing job of actually talking to the to the public relations part of companies, of uh, of users, posting forums, etc. And uh, there's another there's another um, thing about the Cyan Engine model, which is we have a rich amount of information spread around all of our uh, websites and all around our infrastructure. And uh, one of them is the wiki. The Sanjin Mod wiki is uh, simply stunning if you are an Android platform developer because it will give you uh, not only instructions on how to build Sanjin Mod, but also you can learn a lot from Android uh, the, from there, okay, Info about your device. So imagine that uh, you want to actually, uh, imagine that you actually want to change your device to, to run Sanjin Mod. This would be the place that you would want to go. Okay, installing Sanjin Mod is usually, usually pretty easy, and uh, I'm pretty sure around here some people will, will help you, you can come to me too. But the wiki shows uh, in very simple steps what you can do to actually enjoy your device with Sanjin Mod. And please do visit. The site is uh, very simple, it's wiki.sanjinmod.com. Additionally, we have uh, these uh, support forums. And uh, these forums will answer all your questions and all your problems that you have with, uh, with our one. Uh, if you have suggestions, if you just want to chat with someone, 
about, about the subject, feel free to go there. It's very easy. Farm.cyanogenmod.com. And uh, lots of activity around CyanogenMod happens uh, over IRC channels. And uh, we usually work on Freenode, okay? And uh, this is how you do the channel. So you can feel free to join us over at CyanogenMod. We would love to have you and to actually explain and answer all your questions, actually. So, um, from a community point of view, we give, a, we give back a lot to, to the community. So we, we provide stable ROMs for many devices. We have many people coming to us saying, well, thanks, you, you have extended my device lifetime by a lot because you are providing the latest version while my original equipment manufacturer is providing like 2.0 or 2.1. Okay, and this is, uh, this is great for us. And also, obviously, the chance to be involved in the project, okay? So pretty much uh, we have uh, users who flash, we have nightly deals, and this means that every night we have automated uh, releases. And uh, these are usually pretty stable, however, sometimes they can be broken. It's, uh, that's what they are for, for us to detect what is happening, what, uh, what we broke in our uh, recent changes. So, um, if you want to actually check out one of our night wheels or releases, you can use our mirror network. It's really easy to get in. It's get.cm, so get.cm, okay? And uh, we have this uh, huge bug tracker going on also, so there are some people I would like to shout at because they, uh, they are really, really um, important in how Sanjay and Mode works. In particular, the bug tracker is maintained by only one guy, and this is uh, it's a huge amount of work, and he deserves a lot of... Uh, Respect actually. We also give a, uh, we also receive a lot back from the community. Okay, so uh, basically, from an every event that we go, we get lots of people coming to us and actually uh, asking how they can contribute back, uh, saying that's how much they like Sanj and Mod. Uh, people are really enthusiastic about it and they love it. It really galvanizes us and gives us motivation to continue. And uh, I understand that the Bangalore user group is really, really huge. So. We, Anyone here from the Bangalore user group? Okay, great. So, um, we receive a lot of reports and suggestions. So, like I said, we use them every night, and this comes from all our process of actually giving back to the community and receiving, uh, receiving this uh, as an answer, okay? And uh, recently, we have been getting quite a lot of attention from OEMs. Uh, we have been contacted by several of them because Sanjumon is now in a point where you have lots of users, so it's kind of significant. And you see lots of applications which have problems with Sanjumon trying to actually solve those problems. Uh, even uh, last week there was this Netflix bug, or two weeks ago, I don't remember, and uh, they fixed the bug that only affected Sanjumon devices. And for us, uh, it's amazing to have a, a billion dollar company actually looking into uh, community projects and uh, trying to, to support those users. And the same is happening with companies like uh, Samsung, DLG Electronics, uh, Sony Ericsson, and, and many others who are contacting us at the moment. Okay, so CyanogenMod is a um, very technical, uh, very technical um, group of people. Okay, so we have um, we have this whole infrastructure going on in order to support all these devices. It's not easy. Uh, there are many different ones, and uh, I'll talk a bit about our infrastructure and uh, how we actually do what we do, and how we solve our most of our problems. Okay, so most of it, Sanjay uh, Mali is also on GitHub. Everyone can go there and actually check our source. And for Kitty, you are welcome to do it. Many people do it for commercial re reasons or because it's just fun to change something. Um, also, we use repo for uh, repository management, the same as Android, and. Uh, we use Gary for code reviews. Now, uh, let me tell the story about code reviews. Um, previously, we used GitHub and we just accepted patches from everyone. And uh, you can understand how these would work with like two or three devices. But if you grow up to 80, uh, I could make a parallel with that and the traffic here in Bangalore, okay? It's a giant mess. And uh, so basically, what we did was introducing code review and our quality went up a lot, so we ended up breaking the tree much, uh, much less, and um, and actually having many more people contribute back. It's much easier to manage and to, to contribute. So even if uh, not enjoyed the latest, if you have an open source project, I really recommend actually doing code reviews because they, it's simply an amazing tool. Okay. 
And uh, we have uh, this, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have actually tried to compile Android. Right? Uh, uh, show of hands, please. Okay, well, so compiling Android takes quite a bit of time, okay? Uh, if you have a really fast machine, you can do it in like 10 minutes, maybe. Most people will do it in like 25. And uh, we do nightly builds, okay? So we build for every device, we build every single, uh, every single night. And this process takes us all around 24 hours, so we are really hitting the clock time for the nightly build. And uh, as you can imagine, building releases manually for eight devices is completely out of the question, okay? This would be uh, very error prone. Uh, we have done it in the past. I mean, all of our development was like this before. So we decided to actually automate the whole process. And we have this build cluster which was gently donated to us. We are in the process of setting it up uh, because we had some problems with in the last release. Uh, but uh, everything will go will go as planned, I hope. And uh, we have several servers serving uh, website, wiki farms, and several people who maintain them. And this is all a community effort, so I think it's uh, exactly fantastic. And we have our own mirror network in uh, get.cm. And uh, you, I mean, it's uh, it's really hard to manage how much how much traffic uh, bandwidth actually gets pulled from our servers after releases and during activities. So. People maintaining these are actually doing uh, an awesome job. So, one of those uh, things that sets us apart in the Android uh, community in regards to open source building is that we offer the same experience for all devices. Okay? Uh, you can see in this picture we have uh, low resolution devices, medium resolution devices, tablets, and high resolution phones. Okay? So, but this is a result of our efforts to actually uh, share the same tree for all the devices. And this is something that is disrupted in the industry. Because if you, if you go and check the repositories of, for example, TI or Qualcomm, uh, what, what will happen is, uh, actually TI is, uh, is quite good at it, uh, but if you check Qualcomm, um, you'll see that pretty much every device, every board revision will have a, a different uh, specific tree. And uh, this is something that I think sets us apart in, the, in, this, uh, in this specific uh, field because we, we can share all the improvements made by one. We imagine that you want to improve some device, all of the others will get that benefit. And this is something that is amazing for us. Okay, so we have a single development tree to build them all. Okay, so we have every single platform running in one tree. We support, we support OMAP, OMAP 4, OMAP 3, uh, Tegra 2. Uh, pretty much all the Qualcomm processors out there, and we are always adding support for more. And uh, hardware support is really hard, so this is something that uh, we'll talk a bit more in the technical, uh, in the other talk, the technical one, because uh, it's more appropriate. It's a really technical uh, subject. And uh, well, basically, like I said, this uh, this trend of uh, using uh, different branches and different trees for each device leads to problems, okay? And you may not know it, but you've all suffered from it, okay? So when Google drops a new uh, source tool, it's like uh, gingerbread, I think, um, you get delayed upgrades because we have heard of stories on OEMs where uh, when, the, when some, source, some source code for, for example, gingerbread drops, it will, at the point that it will be incompatible with all the devices. And this is why your device takes long to get upgraded. I mean, between other reasons, there are also carrier uh, motives, etc. But this is one of the, of the reasons. It's really hard to maintain separate trees. So, uh, in Cyan Engine Mod, we have uh, several main difficulties. And uh, one of our biggest ones is uh, dealing with the uh, closed source drivers, okay? So, we end up using uh, lots of binary blobs. And this is, this is uh, quite an interesting topic, actually. And uh, the problem with this is we can't actually communicate with hardware because we don't know how it works, okay? So basically this uh, industry is very close traditionally and uh, only OEMs have access to the source code, okay? And the documentation on how it works. Okay, so uh, we usually, what we do is pretty much every hardware vendor has an open source uh, development for it. And uh, they're, that's what they deliver to OEMs is very close to their development ports. Okay, so we end up basing what we our drivers in uh, in these reference implementations plus some reverse engineering that we do on our own. Okay, 
and uh, this effort is uh, made possible by uh, Qualcomm who makes uh, um, uh, makes um, color or form, and TI makes so maximum and then the Tegra, etc. And these are actually amazing resources that engine model wouldn't exist without them. Okay, and um, yeah, uh, sometimes like I said, you need to reverse engineer a lot. And uh, I'll, I'll, uh, this is not exactly the right time to discuss it. It will take me like an hour. So we'll, I'll leave that for the next talk and I'll really go to the points of, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, reverse engineering topic. So another question that people ask is about uh, say engine mod is, can you contribute, can you contribute back? Okay, yeah, sure you can. Uh, we have uh, things to do for pretty much everyone, uh, everyone around. So, how many of you are developers? Okay, well, so for for you, is there anything that you don't like about Android and that you think that you could change? Like, it, imagine maybe even a small change, like the placement of something or uh, the way something works, and. Uh, yeah, if you if you don't like it, you can just delve into our source code and actually change it and contribute back. This is uh, how we get most of our patches. Like we have lots of users and even core developers who start to contribute out of frustration because they didn't like something and they ended up contributing back and they got hooked to actually contribute more. Because uh, if you ever contribute to, to an open source project, you know that it's something that you get addicted to very easily. Okay, because it's a it's a really nice experience to interact with uh, with the whole community. And uh, sometimes people come up with like amazing ideas. So we have this uh, new unlock screen for uh, CyanogenMod 7.1, and this came in like two weeks before release. And this, it was this guy who, well, I, I want this, I will have this done. And he came to us and thought we guided him to, through the process. And uh, well, uh, now it's the default one in CyanogenMod. So this is how we get lots, lots of our changes. Okay? so. For non-developers out there, we also have uh, several uh, things that need done. Okay, uh, especially in uh, uh, in countries such as India, we are we have really poor translations. And if you speak a language other than English, you can actually contribute back, and uh, the community will appreciate your efforts very much. Okay, and uh, sometimes people look at Android and they say, "Okay, I'm a user specialist uh, guy, and I can actually see that this makes no sense at all." So this should work in a totally different way. And sometimes people come to us and say, look, uh, here's this idea. Do you want to implement this workflow for your application to work better? And we consider it, and sometimes we improve, uh, improve Android that way. And uh, for people who want to actually contribute, feel free to join us in free node at engine.com slash dev, and, uh, sorry, dash dev, and uh, we'll be able to guide you through the whole process and actually help you contribute all your changes back in, okay? So how do you do this? Uh, it's really easy, okay? So if you saw a tweet from Andy Rubin, our system is basically the same, but you made it a little better because it's for, uh, easy for someone to actually start doing uh, some, um, some development, okay? So you just need to actually init, uh, use repo to actually fetch your project, then you can uh, sync it, okay? Everything you see here is now, is now wiki, much more documented. This is a very abridged version, and you, you will see uh, complete instructions for, for your specific device on, your, on our wiki. And uh, using repo, it's really easy. Just start the branch using the repository you want to modify. Then you, you, become, you enter your awesome, most awesome mod in, in mode, and you actually do something with it. And then you contribute back, and uh, then the whole thing starts with the, the review process. And something uh, recently I started being able to review batches that go into the same general source code. And it's something that I've learned a lot with, like working with other people. It can get you uh, a real grasp of how project management feels, and it's a skill that pretty much everyone should, should have in a corporate setting. So sometimes people think uh, open source only allows you to learn technical skills. But it doesn't. It teaches how to interact with others, how to actually uh, get skills that are very useful in a corporate, uh, in a corporate setting. Okay. So yeah, contribute to change is back. So the community is what makes CM great, and uh, I see here a, an opportunity to actually make all of you guys uh, send us things and actually be part of it. So we don't like people. We don't like that people actually come to us and contribute in time and believe 
this is okay if you want to do that, but we like to people to become part of the whole experience to actually enjoy the, the whole feeling around the community and this is, uh, this is what makes CM great. So we'll start with part four, which is uh, your questions. If, what, what are the process you use to choose what device gets added or if you have a priority order or do you go by popularity? How do you decide which device gets added when? Okay, the question was what is our criteria for adding devices if it's uh, by popularity or uh, any, other, any other method. And the answer is no, we, we don't actually regard popularity that as a big, uh, big thing. Like I said, we are an open source project, so we have no commercial motivations at all. So, of course, we like having many users and we like to, to have as many as possible. But uh, for a long time in Sand uh, our policy for having devices was we have those that we, that we personally bought, okay? And uh, this is still the case in, in many, for many phones. Uh, now we have uh, many uh, original equipment manufacturers, so EM sending us some devices to actually put CM on. And this is, this is great because it gives us a uh, much uh, wider area to, to work on. For example, when I started working on the HTC Desire, it was my main phone at the time, so pretty much everyone tried to call me wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it because the device was broken all the time, okay? Uh, but at the moment, we have several people reviewing patches, so if someone comes to us and says that, well, I have this device ready, okay, we, we don't have a, a specific commercial uh, plan or a defined schedule to actually add some specific device. If someone gets it and starts developing on it, they will be able to add it to our tree. We don't want to exclude anyone at all. We welcome everyone to come, to come and contribute their device tree. One of your slides showed that OEMs are interested. Uh, my question is, has it uh, ever happened that the OEM has taken one of your mod, built over it and released it for normal customers, not for kids, the normal release? Okay, um, I won't tell names, but yes, that has happened. Uh, that has happened in several cases. We have seen features that were in Cyan Engine Mod and are very, very closely implemented in a uh, in their stock ROMs, okay? And uh, there are others who take some platform support from us, like when going from Freud to Gingerbread. And, uh, well, there are, there are several cases that I could mention, but yeah, that, that has happened in the past. I expect it to continue to happen. But that's, uh, that's good, I mean, uh, some of the companies who take, who take things from us actually don't do things back, okay? So this is something that we want. It's uh, something that's, uh, that should happen in, uh, in an open community. The license allows for it, and uh, it's there for people to take. So if so many users can enjoy for more work, we, we, are, we are pleased, okay? Thanks. How do you pay your bills as a most business model? Sorry? How do you pay your bills? I mean, you said- How do you pay for what? The bills, your bills. Uh, Where do you get the money from to kind of run your, uh, you know, pay all your uh, developers and so on? Oh, right, uh, we, we don't pay our developers. Uh, it's not a commercial or it's not even a non-for-profit organization. It's not an organization at all, okay? It's just a group of people who got together in the community and actually contribute things on their free time. So most of, our, most of us have uh, their jobs and uh, while most people are resting, we are contributing to Sand and what basically that's, that's how we do it. In the beginning, uh, somebody told me that I uh, told us that uh, you will be coming up with an upgrade on ICS, so in two months of time, right? So, what challenges do you see in making that happen in two months? Okay, uh, first of all, I think everyone took the two months uh, thing too literally. It was more of a, like, you see things, uh, places like Engadget who are very sensationalist, and uh, uh, as soon as it was posted, they were like, okay, in two months we'll have the final release. Uh, that was a tweet that said something like, if you read the, the, between the lines, it said, uh, we are working on this, please leave us alone for, for now because we are really focused, okay? Uh, that was basically that. So, yeah, but uh, to answer your question, uh, our biggest challenge at the moment is supporting hardware. Uh, like, uh, between, uh, so many people think that uh, the main problem in supporting devices is in the, is in the kernel. Well, it's not, okay? The kernel is something that is, is, is always open source and it's very, very easy for us to actually interact with. The problem lies uh, in, the, in the glue between the framework and the hardware, okay, and the kernel. And uh, 
many hardware vendors sold these uh, these uh, uh, hardware interface layers, okay? And uh, basically, it's where most of them implement their trade secrets, okay? So uh, it's understandable that they close it, but this is the biggest problem for us. Why? Because uh, if people uh, follow the API of those hardware section layers, things will just work, okay? Everything will be okay. But then there's another problem. Uh, sometimes people don't follow the API, and we have to do other things, uh, which I'll talk about tomorrow in the other talk. Uh, but when they do follow them, uh, sometimes it happens that Google just drops a new release, and this was the case in s Sandwich. So I think pretty much every other abstraction layer, except for uh, audio as a compatibility layer, lights, sensors, pretty much all the others change. So for each uh, platform that we support, we need to have hardware support for, for them. Okay. And uh, you can expect some devices to come up early. Uh, I believe we have ICS almost fully running with 3D acceleration, uh, radio, radio uh, technology working, mobile data, etc. on the LG Optimus 3D. Okay. And uh, because it's very close to, the hardware is very close to the Galaxy Nexus, so the hardware support is already there. So we can expect the OMAP 4 line of devices to be the first line in line to be supported. And uh, for the others, basically, we, we, we are working on uh, Qualcomm and uh, NVIDIA and uh, SDRX to provide their, their hardware interface layers and uh, implementations. Okay? And when we have that, we can actually have support for the other devices. While we don't, we are trying to do compatibility layers, but uh, it's an extensive, uh, extensive work. We have done it for some of them, but uh, others are really hard, like graphics and uh, hardware compositing, etc. Uh, guys, we're going to make this the last question. Uh, please uh, follow what I uh, to think outside. Um, we have a break coming up, so this is going to be the last question. Thank you. Yeah, recently we have heard about your association with Samsung. Uh, can you speak a bit louder, please? Recent, recently, we have heard about your association with Samsung. How is that going on and what we can expect from the future? Okay, uh, there's no actual association with Samsung. So there is a there is an understanding with, between us. They send devices for us and communicate closely with some of our developers. And this was before, uh, as most of you know, Samsung and Steve Conley works for Samsung. But this was way before he worked there, okay? And the fact that he works there changes nothing, basically, okay? So our relation with uh, Samsung is, uh, we have a very close relation with our developers, so we share a lot of experience, the same with Sony Ericsson and, uh, and LG, okay? And uh, we, we think that this, uh, this kind of synergy that we create between OEMs and us is really important. It helps us a lot, and certainly we can, we can help back in some way. Okay. Does that answer your question? So how are you guys different from SAM firmware? Sorry? How are you guys different from SAM firmware, which is another leading provider of firmware? Uh, I didn't get it, sorry. Uh, have you heard about SAM firmware? About? SAM firmware. Uh, I'm not sure. It's another firmware yeah, for Samsung firmware. firmware. It's I'm not sure I got the actual word. SAM firmware, like Samsung firmware. It's a, it's a separate firmware for Samsung. Oh, okay. Okay, no, I, I don't know, sorry. I don't work with Samsung devices, so there are some things that are specific to, to some devices. Uh, basically, my experience with uh, device-specific things and vendor-specific things lies with, with uh, the HTC Desire and um, uh, basically the old Sony Ericsson XPO line. So for the others, uh, we can talk to me. We can we can discuss it in the in the break. And uh, for all the others who couldn't ask questions during this uh, in this session, also come talk to me, please. So I'll be glad to discuss anything you you might have to ask. Okay. Um, Thank you.